And I started thinking about like what makes Spirapar Yoga unique and how we teach. And I think I finally got it done and I'm gonna read it because it's just such a good sentence that I don't wanna I don't wanna mess it up. It's it's we teach an inquiry-based multidisciplinary practice that emphasizes curiosity and investigation. So that really means that multidisciplinary because it's about the mind and the breath and the body. And uh, it emphasizes curiosity because we teach our teachers, instead of constantly calling out the poses, always, always going back to the student and asking them, do you feel this? What are you thinking? Where is your breath? So it's kind of an open inquiry as opposed to the teacher telling the student what to do, right? Um, we also, we teach a vinyasa based sequence and how to teach vinyasa and linking sequences, but I think it's kind of like learning the alphabet. We, we teach so much the basics that if you want to teach restorative or other types of yoga, Karina, you actually in your 500 hour here yes. at Spira, you could take your, your teaching at the next level with those. But we're trying to keep the teaching style open so people can teach any style of yoga. The one thing where, when it comes to anatomy, um, we do make differences is that uh, I went through the sequence with the um, uh, physical therapist and we really made sure that all the poses that are coming from the yoga or the gymnastic tradition, because now yoga is evolving and coming deeper, is, um, is in the healthy range of motion and it's, and it's been reviewed and agreed you know, with mo modern science of what, what actually works for the joints. And Carrie, you took my teacher training a couple of years ago now, right? Um, and you're a physician. Can you talk a little bit about um, the anatomy part? Yeah. So, you know, anatomy can be a very, I think, scary word um, to a novice or a beginner, someone with very little experience. And I think the SPARA teacher training makes it incredibly approachable uh, for someone with as little experience as, you know, uh, someone just beginning their yoga practice mm -hmm. to someone like me who has had multiple hours of anatomy <laughs> classes. And it's a great refresher as well for someone like me. Um, but it teaches you from head to toe, front to back, the major muscle groups that you use in any yoga practice, whether it's vinyasa versus hatha versus a yin-based yoga practice. It teaches you the joints. Um, and in each pose, how do you use those joints? How do you use those muscle groups? Where should you be feeling the pose? Or where should the stretch not be felt in certain stretching poses? And I think that really helps not only the teacher describe the pose and ask the students um, to feel their body in that specific space and time, but it also helps the student also know where they need to be as well. Yeah. Um, you know, modifications, I think, were a, a weekend long um, and several weekend longs that we talked about, and modifications, I think, are incredibly important. Some people may feel that modifications of a yoga pose pulls away from a tradition, but I think every teacher training, especially one that comes out of some uh, teacher training program, especially like one at Spira, will agree that a modification allows you to be in a pose that is safer. It allows for a student to be in a pose that may have health limitations, that may not have the flexibility to be in that. Um, we're taught to use props like bolsters and um, straps and blocks to also help us get into a better, a safer alignment, a more supportive pose. Mm -hmm. So modifications, I think, in many ways actually opens up the practice of yoga to a much wider and larger group of people that may not otherwise step into a yoga studio. Yeah. Yeah. And Karina and I, we talk about this all the time, that these so-called traditional poses uh, first of all, the goal of yoga, the philosophy and why people were practicing yoga was quite different than right now, this medical holistic approach. It was definitely a more spiritually holistic approach and they did not care so much about, you know, knee alignments and things like that. Um, but also because, um, like, even classical practitioner like Iyengar, he had a really flexible body. 
So right now, we, if you look at the photos of Iyengar and you say that is the pose that you have to do, you actually end up with a lot more injury. So where we come into inquiry is like, instead of back bends, we teach frontal openers. And yeah, it's just a different word to describe the same thing, but it makes all the difference because all of a sudden your mind goes, I am supposed to feel the chest opening and the shoulder opening and the abdominal muscles lengthening as opposed to like bending the back without support, exactly. right?